Hello, Calling Up Community. I'm Claudia Alec, and today we will be understanding some of the rhetoric around Kamala Harris. Hi. So she's running for vice president alongside Joe Biden against Trump and, uh, what's his name? Pence. Right. So we will be receiving communications from I'm going to name three different populations, and all of these communications are going to have the goal of confusion, disruption, and maintaining white dominant systems and driving us to a place where Trump remains president. The three populations we will hear from are bots, actual computer programs designed by people who want to maintain white dominant systems who wants to um, harass and harm uh, justice advocates online. Um, and these are computer programs. And alas, many of them are, they will be using avatars of black faces. They will be using speech patterns and making vocabulary choices that are meant to mimic um, blackness and perform blackness online. We've already done some videos on this and it's disturbing and it's a thing. Keep your eye out. You will also be receiving communications from actual people who really care deeply about maintaining white dominant systems. Now, some of these people will be professional like journalists, professional like people who work in the, in the politics industry. They're not public servants. There is a difference between the politician who's a public servant and the person who has a job making a lot of money trying to um, create the conditions where the public isn't served. So you're going to be hearing a lot from those types, uh, the journalists, um, just basically like, you know, like your Tucker Carlson types, ugh, um, those types of folks. We're going to be hearing from them. They're going to be giving a lot of, they're going to be asking a lot of questions like, I'm just asking a reasonable question. And these are all going to be white nationalist talking points meant to disrupt conversations about actual meaning making and good decision making around who should leave this country. The next uh, group we're going to hear from, the other talking point we're going to hear from is um, that, oh, oh, the other group we're going to hear from is, um, uh, this is the card one, people who are confused. The folks who have heard this message and believed it, and now they're repeating it, which is why we're doing this exercise together. Sorry it took me two and a half minutes to get here. Here we are, the five ways that I believe we need to keep an eye out on rhetoric we will be receiving around Kamala Harris. One, people are going to say, let's have a conversation about how she's not qualified. We don't need to do that. We obviously understand that she's more than qualified to do the job. Also, that talking point doesn't come up for the white men who run for office. So we know that this is about suggesting that just by being a woman, or just by being a black person, she's not qualified. But they are going to be like, well, you know, prove it to me. Don't engage in those exchanges. You don't need to engage in exchanges that prove that the woman who has been, um, who's running for vice president has a right to do that. She's overly qualified. Anyone who's doing that is not engaging in good faith communication. Shut it down. Next, you're going to hear Kamala Harris has a history of hurting black people. She has been engaged in policies and projects that hurt and harmed black people. She's been engaged in things that were connected to the prison industrial complex. Well, yeah, um, obviously. First, I had no idea that there was going to be a purity test where a vice presidential candidate would not be qualified if they had a history of doing um, um, policies or supporting policies that hurt and harmed black people. Huh, who knew? Here's the thing. We live in the United States, the imperialist United States, the white dominant United States, and that conversation is one we need to have once she's in power. Please bring up all of her receipts once she's in power. Go for it. I really enjoyed trying to hold President Obama accountable for the large numbers of black people who were still being murdered by officers of the state under his watch. The United States did not change once they put a black man in charge of it for a little bit. That's not how that works. That's not how this country works. So we know that she has an history of hating, hurting blacks, and we also recognize that that conversation is only a conversation that is meant to create talking points for the opposition. 
so that so that white nationalist opposition can go, hey, black people don't even want her. So no one should want her. So any attack we do is justified because black people don't like her. We're going to attack her by calling her out for things that we don't do. So don't engage in those conversations. And for those of us who are part of the justice community, who have been collecting the receipts and paying attention, and who do understand that accountability needs to be had, we start after the election. Next, you will hear that she's not black. And you're going to hear that she's not black from a lot of different folks. Now, this is meant to do a couple of things. One, it's meant to trigger this mythological demographic and suggest that this mythological demographic is really a thing. Um, this mythological demographic of black people who only vote for black people. Now, this is meant to suggest that any black person or woman who has a seat of power is not there because they're fully or overqualified. They're only there because people felt sorry for them and were going to vote for them only because of their identity. So you suggest that she's not black, and therefore she's not a black person, so you shouldn't support her, black people. That's going to be talk. That's going to be a talking point you're going to experience. You're also going to experience the talking point of, oh, well, she's not black because... Um, she's mixed. And they're going to suggest that being an African American, being a Caribbean American, even being um, a, an American who is a descendant of um, Indian um, uh, immigrants, that these groups somehow do not have shared solidarity and a love for this country. And they're also going to suggest that because Kamala Harris has other ties to other racial groups that she's somehow not black. That's not how it works in the United States. One drop. So we understand that that talking point is about forcing us into a conversation that isn't about policy, that isn't about what they are doing with our money, what they are doing with our laws, what they are doing with our bodies. It was They want us to have a conversation that's about what her identity is and whether or not she can claim the identity that she has been claiming her entire life. Anyone who wants to have that conversation is engaging in a racist conversation and is not there for good faith communications or meaning making. Next, you're going to hear, not only is she uh, not black, but also she's too black. And they're gonna critique her on any performative thing that she has that even suggests blackness. They're gonna critique her on her volume, on her tone, on the way she inflects her language, on the way she says words. If she ends her sentences well, they're going to critique her. They're going to critique her intelligence. They're going to critique her education. Just know that almost all the critiques are going to be coded critiques of, oh, we think she's a little too black. Oh, oh we think that she's a, too, she's a little too womanly. Don't engage with those conversations. And the last one you're going to hear, and this is the this is the fun rhetoric piece you're going to hear. You're going to hear that she's unqualified, and you should not support her, and you should be suspicious because she wants the job, because she's trying to get it. White nationalists sure do hate an ambitious black woman. They think that just the argument that a black woman wants or desires power and is trying to attain it should be a good argument to suggest that um, she's unqualified for the position. Again, we just recognize this is racism and we don't have to fall for it. So, you will be hearing from bots, from haters, white nationalist lovers, uh, white dominance culture lovers, um, and also people who are in deep, deep denial that, that, white, that the white nationalism that we're soaked in even exists. You're going to be hearing from them, and you're also going to be hearing from people who got confused by some of this toxic communication that's been happening. I started making this video at the top of the election uh, cycle when she was running for president, but then I decided, eh, we have some other fights to fight. But now we need this tool. So understand you're going to hear that she's not qualified. Don't engage in that argument. Don't even have the argument. Let the person know you're not engaged. Publicly state this is not good faith communication. You know it's not. And this is you trying to, trying to do something toxic. 
She's, they're going to claim that she has a past record of hurting blacks. Obviously, that's true. She was a prosecutor um, and worked in law enforcement in the United States. Come on! And also that she's not black enough, that she's too black, and also um, that she's too ambitious. And we're going to ignore all of that poisonous, toxic nonsense. All right, calling up community. I look forward to us being able to not be driven totally bananas by all of this misinformation and toxic bad faith communication. All right, onward, colleagues.